here we have a tractor and wagon kit. Uh, that's kit really that I've really fancied for about oh, knocking over 30 years I suppose. Uh, when it was in the uh, green box with the window uh, lid. Um, I think it's the, a nice looking engine, uh, the nice contrast between the yellow wheels and the black boiler firebox and uh, chimney smoke box. Um, quite a, a nice kit really um, and having done just the traction engine kit in the past which you can see a video of or well, I think there's a couple of them actually including the uh, Meccano plowing engine drum winch on it um, quite easy to do uh, better if you have a couple of small, well a small spanner uh, but it can be done um, with a pair of long nose pliers really I suppose um, spanner is the better way of doing it so uh, this was a Valentine's present so very nice thank you very much uh, and uh, We'll have a look in the box. So here you can see, folks, the uh, box tray with all the parts, instructions, and what have you. Uh, you can see what well most of the parts really. The boiler, the sight glass gauge, the smoke box, the chimney is already done for you. Don't have to worry about that. You got no soldering to do anything like that. No riveting, nothing like that. Uh, here, fire box box around obviously solid fuel all your smalls there uh, drive bands looking through the plastic there safety valve whistle axles um, but at the top you got the uh, if you like chassis frames for the uh, the wagon itself wagon tube there uh, a lot of it uh, is uh, common to uh, any of the traction engines colors vary of course so uh, we'll. Uh, I did have a little bit of a sneak preview earlier, but we'll we'll get the uh, cellophane off. And uh, we'll have a closer look. So. Sure. There we are. See the two main wheels at the back, the rear wheels. Your bunker or scuttle. Oil in there. Uh, in here, the engine frame with pre-soldered uh, tubes. And Dave showed me how he uh, soldered these. Uh, very easy when they do it like he did it. He's got what he calls a heating fork, and. Um, he puts it on a boiler that's uh, essentially a jig, secures the frame in, uh, obviously he puts it on the bench and he puts the heating fork in there. Now the forks or the prongs on these, this fork go through the three holes there. Then obviously pre-brent tubes and, and cut to size places them in the right positions on the fork butting up to the side of the engine frame by the ports. Then he heats up this fork which has got like a, fr um, a bit of a framework on it, a tag if you like, it's quite long really. So you're not actually heating up anywhere near the frame and obviously damaging any of the paint or anything. Obviously that gets hot, the heat transfers through to the other side and then they solder it all together in one. He said the trick is he's remembering when the exact time of pulling the forks out. Um, if, if it's too left too long, it'll stick in, and if you take it off too quickly, obviously the, the pipes will fall off. And then, once the the solders uh, hardened, they put a very very fine drill in there just to clear out any rubbish that might be in the end of the port. Next up in here is your standard burner tray, two tablet. Uh, let's have a look at the, uh, we'll work at the top, work our way down, down out. There's the main chassis tube for the uh, the wagon and also funnel of course, standard stuff really. Your hook or draw bar if you like for the, uh, the 
lumber wagon. And at the top here, I'll get it in. That's your front axle for your wheels, one each there, and your steering stick rod that goes up the chimney. Uh, small axles or smaller axles, and that's your uh, for your front axle on your wagon. Uh, crank, main axle for the traction engine. Solid fuel of course. Smalls bag, I'll have all these out yet because the traction engine isn't going to be made uh, very quickly. Uh, but you, uh, you can see there, all your small stuff clips for uh, the end of the uh, axles to hold the wheels on. Uh, small axles and rods, that will be for the uprights on the wagon. Spring for the front uh, suspension. Uh, your screwing cap there for your steam pipe. Whistle, spring, piston, cylinder, all your little small stuff, grub screws. Oh, I'll show you one of the wheels. That's one of your front wheels on the uh, traction engine, or indeed one of your wheels for your trailer. I like, quite, I like that yellow, it's really nice. Um, I think we'll get some tyres. Uh, to suit that. I'd like some solid tyres, not, not uh, grooved ones. Um, I find it easy to get the grooved ones, but not uh, the solid ones. Uh, that's a bit stiff in there, that is the flywheel. Obviously, you see the box, the box actually moves a little bit here and there, so some of the things come out easier. The box is the same box you get with a traction engine kit, obviously without some of the wheels, without some of the uh, all the parts all together for the uh, the uh, lumber wagon. Let's have a look at the uh, one of the frames. There we are, one of the frames. There we are, made in England. You don't see that very often these days, do you? Um, so there's the kit as it is. What I will be doing in a bit will be making the wagon. Uh, I'll show you that. I've had the old ones apart to clean, I've never actually put one together, um, shouldn't be, I don't think, a, a quick look at the park suggests there's nothing any different really, but we'll find out there. And the reason why, uh, I know some of you have seen this one before, the reason why we aren't making the traction engine yet is because if some of you would have seen this on one of the videos and, and photographs on a forum or two, the ploughing drum winch. I don't think I've got a, a, enough parts to make all of that. There's a flat girder in there, uh, five hole wide. Was it seven? No, five hole wide. I know I've got none that small. Uh, I think I might just about have everything else. So what I will be doing, because it's easier to mess with one, adding bits like this to it when it's only partially put together. Um, especially the firebox because as I think I've pointed out in the other videos on this it's very awkward with fat fingers to get in there hold nuts in place while you're putting those bolts in so what I should be doing is uh, putting those on one of the first things I'll do before putting the firebox together onto the uh, the rest of the boiler of this kit. This is the, uh, the leaflet for the assembly instructions and operating instructions of the kit it's also the same one you get uh, sort of standard issue with the uh, traction engine kit. Um, obviously you wouldn't, uh, for obvious reasons, you haven't got the parts. You wouldn't use it for uh, making the uh, the wagon. Uh, quite clearly laid out, it is a picture and read sort of instruction book. I don't think you can see that in the light there. Uh, I'm still experimenting with light by the way and different types of light. but. There's the main components in the box laid out, your checklist. Then we have uh, essentially contents of the kit and indeed the instructions, um, how many you've got of which. And then a uh, nice centre spread diagram. Uh, to be honest, you could make it off that, 
if you've done one before or, or, or know them quite well, you could make make it off that quite easily. Um, definitely the main part is quite uh, easy to work out. Actually pushing the boiler into the firebox, um, it does actually state how to do that best. So do read the instructions. I know we don't. Us blokes very often or till it's too late sometimes. So then it goes into the tractor assembly and the wagon assembly. Um, general ints on running and out of run and do and do nots as you would expect which you normally get on the outside of the box. So there's the instructions. Um, not uh, too complicated by any means. Anybody over the age of about 12, 14 should be able to do it quite easily I would think. 